Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to express my ongoing concern about human rights abuses in Colombia and to oppose any consideration of the pending United States-Colombia Free Trade Agreement until tangible and sustained progress is seen on the ground. Colombia has a long-standing legacy of serious and pervasive human rights violations. Trade unionists, members of indigenous groups, and human rights defenders have been particular targets for violence. Despite some positive rhetoric by the Santos administration about improving protection of human rights, serious abuses continue. In one recent incident reported by Human Rights Watch, seven people were massacred in southern Colombia on July 2nd, reportedly by FARC guerrillas. On June 25th, another eight people were killed also in the southern part of the country. In both cases, children were among those killed. According to Human Rights Watch, there were 17 such massacres between January and May 2011, resulting in a total of 76 deaths, a 21% increase over the same time period in 2010. Several members of indigenous groups have been targeted and killed in recent weeks as well, ranging from children to prominent community leaders. Human Rights Watch reports that 14 members of indigenous communities have been killed in 2011 in the Antioquia Department alone. Other indigenous leaders have been threatened and dozens of families have been displaced. The Colombian government has to act immediately to ensure a thorough investigation into these horrific crimes and to finally end the cycle of impunity. Further, the government must take immediate steps to protect indigenous communities and other particularly vulnerable groups as human rights groups have repeatedly demanded. Labor leaders and trade unionists also continue to be victims of serious abuses. Though the recently agreed to labor action plan commits the government, at least in writing, to take several important steps to prevent and punish these human rights violations, we have yet to see any sort of tangible progress on the ground. With recently published statistics showing that Colombia again led the world in trade unionist deaths in 2010, it is critical that we see a real reduction in violence before we even consider passing and implementing a trade deal. The Labor Action Plan is not legally binding under the FTA before us. If violence and impunity continue, the United States will have no mechanism for delaying or halting implementation of the free trade agreement. The Labor Action Plan fails to require sustained, meaningful, and measurable results. Once we enact the FTA, we lose any ability to force the Colombian government to produce tangible change. Mr. Speaker, I do not support the NAFTA-style trade model illustrated in the three pending Bush-negotiated free trade agreements because so-called free trade has proven destructive to the American economy and harmful to workers both in the United States and abroad. The Economic Policy Institute estimates that implementing the Colombia and South Korea free, to, free trade agreements would increase the U.S. trade deficit by $16.8 billion and eliminate or displace 214,000 U.S. jobs, particularly at a time when we should be focused on job creation. I strongly oppose all three FTAs, which jeopardize more jobs. Finally, I find it particularly concerning that we're considering implementing an FTA with Colombia in the absence of demonstrated progress on human rights and workers' rights. Mr. Speaker, we cannot turn a blind eye to ongoing abuses, and we should not consider the trade agreement until these issues are fully resolved. I thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time.